Okay, we're back again here with some more fire in the lake. I think this is the right options here. Why do we not? Oh, C50, not going to do it. All right, so while I'm doing this, I'm going to give you caught up. I actually noticed a error in play last time. Well, what happened was is I basically uh, uploaded the video, but I forgot to save this game, uh, creating a vassal save file. And so when I reloaded it, it was stuck on the last save file, or that's the only one I had. So I had to watch the video <laughs> to reproduce all the moves and get the game's date back to where it was. And I noticed an error. I noticed that I governed uh, in Hui, but I also trained in Hui. If you remember, we only had four cubes there and there were four US cubes, so we couldn't govern in Hui because the rules say to govern, you have to have more cubes than US cubes present. So I kept the train up there and I paid for it. Uh, but instead of governing there, I, ended up, I just decided to govern. We governed in Kanto and then I decided to govern in Camera. The net effect is we basically only gained like one less patronage because each of those are worth one and Hue is worth two. Uh, you cannot train and govern the same space. Okay, caught that error, that's pretty good. So now we're on to more cards, and I've had time to look up the pivotal uh, events rule because now we're at a part of the game where pivotal events can come into play. Now, what is a pivotal event? I haven't really talked about them too much, but they're the little cards that like this, okay? Each side has their own pivotal event. You can't play them until you have at least two leaders in the RVN leader box. And I believe those actually have to be the leaders. It can't just be, we haven't come across it yet, but there is a defector, not defector, I keep saying defectors, I don't mean that. Um, what am I trying to say? Um, desertion, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, desertion. This is when a failed coup happens and it says like failed coup, you know, and then it, like desertion and like one out of three Arvin cubes just go back to available. So basically a bunch of the, you know, people get kind of disaffected with Arvin and, and uh, decide to just like, you know, melt away. That hasn't happened yet. So when you have two plus leaders like we do now in the Arvin leader box, each card becomes active and has a little other preconditions. So like you can see here, the Tet Offensive. You can play it if you have two cards in the leader box and you have more than 20 gorillas in the south. Uh, what else do we have here? We have like Linebacker 2 for the US. Play if you have two cards and the leader box and support plus available is greater than 40. So we actually could play Linebacker now because you can see the support plus available is greater than 40. So we could play Linebacker. I'm pretty sure we could play the Tet Offensive. I'm almost positive we have more than 20 Gorillas in South Vietnam, which is basically they couldn't be in Central and South Cambodia, or they couldn't be in Laos and Cambodia or North Vietnam. Uh, let's look at the Arvin one, Vietnamization. Uh, play of two plus leader cards, and there's less than 20 US troops on the map. That I am pretty sure there are more than 20 US troops on the map. I could be wrong. We could count them up and see what's how many we have. Uh, there might just be, I think there is definitely more than 20, so I don't think we can play Vietnamization. And then the NVA has the Easter Offensive, and this one lets you, if you have more NVA troops than US troops on the map. Now this, we're getting close maybe. I don't think we have more NVA troops, I'm not sure. What does that mean? Well, these cards are kind of held off to the side until you can use them, and if you look at rules 2.3.8, that is the pivotal events, and it basically says this. It says that they're just a type of event, and a faction may play its pivotal event to cancel a currently played event. Okay, so basically anything that's current, uh, if you meet the conditions, you could trump this essentially, right? And let's see, and you can cancel the currently played event, including the eligibility order, because you get a new eligibility order. As you can see on these cards, they have different uh, a new order potentially on them. The only way you can do that, though, is that your faction must be eligible, the preconditions must be met, and that the first eligible faction hasn't done anything, and there's no coup card showing next. So you can't have a coup card, you can't be in a monsoon, I guess, is a good way to put it, and then play a pivotal event. And you have to do it before the first person takes their choice. So like right now, uh, no one's gone. So only the US and the Arvin are eligible, so only the US or Arvin could play their pivotal event, right? And we already know that the Arvin can't play theirs. So the U.S., if they're like, oh, it's MACV, and as you can see, MACV, the Arvin would go first. Well, the U.S. could say, no, 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 I'm instead going to play Linebacker 2. MACV would go away, it would just become discarded, and Linebacker 2 would become the current event. And that's how pivotal events work. Um, this one's pretty great, as you can see here. Uh, the NVA removes two bases, reduces its resources to half, round down, and becomes ineligible through the next card. So it would stay ineligible even after the next card goes through. And then you would have three U.S. casualties to available. Uh, see, that's pretty interesting. That could be good. We don't have a ton of casualties here. We do have two. 
we would probably like to have their resources and we get rid of their two of their bases. So this is pretty good, but I kind of want to save this for when the U.S. begins to pull out its troops because we're going to be hamstrung a little bit there. And right now we have a bunch of guys in the, in the field, so we can respond to NVA attacks and assaults. Later on, when we pull these out, we're going to be much much in a much weaker position, and it would be kind of probably greater than to use that for effect. So we're going to save that one. Uh, so we'll talk about the other ones as they become available, but we're not going to worry about that. Okay, so we're up to MACV. This one says either US, then Arvin, or NVA, then VC, because you can see there's not a shaded, unshaded, so basically this could be anybody taking this, right? They execute one free special activity, and the faction, faction executing the event stays eligible. Well, this is a definite no-brainer for the Arvin to take as an event, um, because they, they're the first ones up on the next card. And so they can basically have their shot at doing whatever they want, because they stay active. So I think that's like a no-brainer to do. It does give the U.S. a free special activity, and they do go first, and then Arvin goes first. Now, Arvin would love to govern more. Obviously, we want to keep governing because we're, we're still, even though I mess up that one govern, we're still very close to getting to our winning victory condition here with government, with our patronage plus coin control. Um, the U.S. would love um, to stop that. So we can do some things to do that. We can, first off, start putting more guys in Hue because we just need to put in like another one or two and then that would keep them from using this two population city to build up their patronage. It's been really helpful for them to do that. We'd also want to maybe think about other cities where they are have active support. But remember, they had that special ability, so it's kind of tough. It's going to be tough. So the U.S. gets to go first, and you can do a special activity. So what would the U.S. want to do? Well, the U.S. could airstrike. That could be really good. Um, troops, guerrillas, then bases. Yeah, so we could hit troops. We could start bombing troops over in Cambodia if we wanted to. Wait, can we do that? Shh, shh, shh. One to six, oh, we have, have coin pieces in the space. That's right, it's kind of like a spotter. So if we had coin pieces in, in Cambodia or Laos, we could bomb them, but we don't. Um, are there any, and nobody's active. So this is not super great to be using the air power right now because we wouldn't really get much of an effect. You know, there's not like any, if there were NVA troops on the board or in South Vietnam, then we would start using air power more, but they're not. So airstrike doesn't look like something we want to do. We could airlift, or we could advise. Advise is pretty good. We could build up the aid. We desperately need to do that. We could pick one or two spaces not selected for training. Well, we're not training, so we would pick one or two spaces. And in each space, we could sweep in place or assault with Arvin at a cost of zero. That's hot. Or activate underground ranger or irregular to remove two enemy pieces. This could be good. We could do that in Quang Tree. Where else? The Arvin is here. They could sweep. They could help us sweep here. I mean, it's not... Oh, we could use that, though. This could be really good. We do have an irregular here, and play coup is, becoming, is getting to be kind of a pain. Otherwise, there's not a lot of places where the Arvin is actually in contact with the enemy. They haven't really had to engage the forces. They've just been slowly building up their patronage network, and so they haven't really had to go in the field and really mix it up. So I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to advise, because I, I want to build the aid up really badly. And I want to do this. We can pick one or two spaces not selected for training. So we'll select. Oh yeah, where are we? Where do we have active guys? That's pretty great. But there's nobody there, and they still have their rangers here because they haven't moved them. So I think the two faces we're going to pick is Playku. All right, and then we're also going to pick um, Quang Tree. All right. So let's go ahead and use our guy because honestly, like they get a chance. Arvin has the ability to like move their guys around and, and flip them back over. I don't think we have the ability to flip them over at all. We can only activate them. Yeah, we don't have a way to like flip them back down. So they have to do that themselves. So let's just use our special forces. Have it go active, remove two of these gorillas because you have to get rid of gorillas first and then bases that are open. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing here. We'll activate our guy. Yeah, and then return these to available. Okay, and then we'll increase the aid by six. Right? Six is what it is, right? I've only looked at it like 15 times. Yeah, so that's huge. Okay, we need to start building the aid back up, or next round the Arvin is going to be like incredible poor. And that can be very bad for us. Okay, now Arvin gets to do a special activity. Well, hmm, I did kind of want to bring guys up here, didn't I? And I just said that, and then I did that. But I wanted to build aid, but I want to keep them from doing patronage. 
Oh, sometimes it's so hard fighting the war. It's so hard. But we can actually get rid of this base, and that's going to be really big for us, although they're at active opposition. I do want to do that because I'm afraid they're just going to rally back in. Gosh. Oh, it's going to be tough. I think, we're, oh, should I have done the transport? Should I have transported? Yeah, honestly, I should have done that. Okay, we're going to back it up. Flip him back to active, bring those two guys back. This is fairly easy to fix. And I'll tell you why. I need to start clamping down on the patronage. And I really need to do that by moving the cubes around and, and kind of making sure that, even though I really, really, really want to take care of Pleiku here, because uh, I am afraid they're just going to keep building up troops. I'm probably going to regret this. Probably going to be like, that was dumb. Because uh, then Arvin could just come in and assault, although they couldn't, because they only have one troops cube, and only troops can like take things out, and I would need two of those to get rid of that one base. So technically, I wouldn't have been able to like one two punch them here. Um, but yeah, I'm probably gonna regret that. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I took all that time I'm trying to keep these videos short, and I babble on a lot. We're gonna do airlift. We're gonna use any four spaces. We can redistribute any U.S. troops and up to four irregulars, rangers, or Arvin troops among the selected spaces. Okay. So the four spaces we're gonna pick, we're gonna pick Saigon. I'm going to pick Tainan, and we're going to pick Huey, and who else, where else could they do it in? I mean, they can do it a lot of places, unfortunately. Maybe Quinon. Although I'm a little afraid of Da Nang getting, like, overrun with these troops, too. That kind of is, would be bad. But I really need to keep them from, like, governing and, like, doing all that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, we can do up to four cubes. I think that's, oh wait, can I go to play coup? I could bring more guys into play coup. I got what, one, two, three. Oh yeah, we're going to do that. Oh, but I can move the rangers around. That's what I can do. Why shouldn't I, I should probably do that then. Okay, so we're not going to do, we're going to get rid of this guy and we're actually going to move him to play coup. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring in two troops. Oh gosh, but they're running out of cubes here, and I don't want to have Saigon just get totally exposed. Okay, we're bringing one of these guys. Although they can just probably get bought away, but that's just the way it is. Actually, we'll bring in the two. Oh, I'm going to be really afraid of the, some forces could start just storming in Saigon. It's a risk we're going to have to take. All right, so there's the two cubes I'm going to do there. I'm going to move one of these rangers out up there too. Yeah. We're going to start really trying to bring the pain here. Uh, we're going to take some, we're going to take two cubes and we're going to move them up to way. I'm going to make it really difficult for them to govern up here. And then this maybe is where we're going to sweep out of and try to go into Kwong tree eventually. And actually I'm going to take these two and we're going to, we're just going to go hog wild. We're going to go up all the way to Hawaii. I'm going to start stacking them because now they're just kind of getting all over the place. And then I'm going to take some and move them to, where was the other place I wanted to go? I did Huey, did Pleiku, Saigon. Oh yeah, I can only do that. And Tainan. So let's go ahead and move three more over to Kontun. So now we're going to have to start stacking them. And then that leaves three here. And Tainan. I don't want to get these out of bombard range, and these will move to Saigon. Yeah, there we go. Now we're now we're using our brain power. Okay, boom. I like that. This boost bolsters up Saigon, gets us out of bombard range. There, that's really annoying. Um, we put some more troops in Kontun, so we can maybe start sweeping around and clearing this out, and we blocked away. I think that's a good move. Okay, because now they're gonna have to bring in a lot more extra cubes to in order to start governing Huey, and that's gonna be kind of annoying. That being said, now the Arvin gets to pick a special activity they want to do, and they're definitely going to govern. They're going to govern in Quinon, and where else can they govern? Oh, they can govern in Onlock. So we can't stop at all. We just have to try to stop as much as we can. And and Huey was just too good. Like getting two points is just it, it really is too good. Uh, do remember that because we have the Young Turks, we had an added plus two to our patronage. So let's adjust that to opposition. So adjust that to opposition, and we're going to get one, two, and then two more is four. So patronage goes up 25. You can see we're getting we're getting very close. We're getting very close. Okay, and faction play. So Arvin will stay eligible. So remember that. So now the U.S. gets to go. Now they get an op and a special activity. I 
think they're going to want to... They could do the advise now. That could be hot. They could do the train and advise because it's less shipped away patronage. Which is great. Uh, and then advise would let us like actually start doing stuff. We could start sweeping. That would be hot. We could sweep an airstrike, which I think could be good for us because we could take these guys out or we could start moving in here, which maybe we'd want to do is just sweep an airstrike and play coup because it's already an active opposition. And we'd be able to probably knock this base out if we get a decent die roll. Um, yeah, that could be good. Where else would I want to sweep and like take things out? Probably not really anything else. Ah, but like training would be great because we could actually take away some of that patronage and that would really blunt their their that moves. But honestly, we're going to try to take care of play coup if we can, and I think that's going to be the best move. So we are going to sweep, and then we're going to airstrike. So sweep lets us move again any troops of desired onto adjacent free locks and then to adjacent spaces. Um, we don't have to go on locks. We can just go into adjacent spaces and activate one per troop uh, or irregular there. Oh, that's nice. Or in jungle, one for every two. So we're not in the jungle. This is all, the highlands are like where things get nasty. So we're gonna bring in, even though it still exposes us to bombard. We're gonna bring in everything because. Oh, but actually, I don't know if we want to bring in everything. Yeah, why not? There's no real reason to keep it in contune. They can just ambush there if they want to. So we'll sweep here. That means we're gonna activate these guys. All right, now we're gonna airstrike. We roll a die. Uh, hopefully we get a nice high roll. Oh, so, <laughs> man, just not really good for the old VC or NBA. They just can't seem to keep that trail up. We're definitely going to spend two to knock the trail down. Uh, we're going to get rid of all these then with our other ones. It leaves us one other point, but we can't really spend it anywhere. Nobody else is active, and there's no like troops floating around. So, yeah. Oh. All right, return to available, return to available, and goodbye base, return to available. Okay, dope, 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 dope. Now we can probably pacify this region and start knocking out this opposition again. That was unfortunate they were able to knock it back all the way to active, but we're just going to do what we can do when we can do it. Okay, they go to ineligible, they come back, and Arvin stays eligible because they use that really great Mac B. They reason it to their advantage. Okay, draw a card. All right, what's this event? All right, we got Anam. Uh, let's see, North-South Rivalry lingers the unshaded NBA and BC minus one resource each per space with both. Okay, that's not, that's like zero. And patronage plus two. Hmm, mm -hmm. that could be good because we, oh wait, I totally forgot because of our special ability, we could pick one of these cities and not reduce it. And I think we'll just do that here. Oh, that was right. Because we have that special capability. So I'm going to keep on lock actually active support and only reduce camera. By one that's actually that man that ability is paying off big time that capability okay shaded event remove uh what does that say remove support from hue Ugh, da Nang, and an adjacent province oh oh hue da Nang, and adjacent provinces oh that would be bad that would actually they're all active opposition but just losing it there would be real bad um that's something that they don't necessarily want who goes next on that card oh nva hmm NBA probably wouldn't care that much to do that, but I don't want to let them have that event. That's that's not great. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do... Oh, I really want to do a special activity, though. really want to do that. Because I'm just getting so close to the governability, and it would be really nice. Although if I spread coin control, that's probably almost as good. Hmm. Tough, 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 tough. You know what? We're doing it. We're just gonna we're gonna risk it. We're gonna risk it for the biscuit, because we're just gonna try to build that patronage up. We're gonna try to force uh, people into bad choices. I think. So to do patronage again, I think we can have to train or patrol. Uh, train is like okay. It's not great. We could we could do play coup. Could spend some money and help out the U.S. here, which might be really good for them. Help them, like, a little bit. Uh, we could bolster a city up. We, do, we have troops and police. Do we need a base in a city if we want to do that? Um, or if Arvin troops, police, and coin control pacify one or two levels. That could be good. 
We could definitely boost up the cities a little bit to make them easier to like grain away with patronage, which would be ideally the good idea, right? Oh, we could sweep and attain in though and get an easy two coin control. That could be really hot too. I don't have a ton of guys that can do that though. I could try to take Ken Fong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many things I could do. <sighs> do we have a ranger here? Okay, okay, okay. Maybe instead of governing, we're just gonna do some good old fashioned sweeping and raid. What can we do in each space? Move an adjacent ranger and activate an Yes, yes, that's what we're gonna do. Yes, we're gonna sweep and raid. We're gonna sweep and raid. So we're gonna pay three resources for every place we sweep in. Is there anywhere we wanna sweep? Oh yeah, we definitely wanna sweep in Contum because I wanna keep those guys off, off kilter there. We could sweep into here because I think Huey is gonna be like a lost cause for governing, but um, yeah, that could be good, but then they could just bombard it pretty quickly. Oh man. This is looking bad. We need to like figure out what we're going to do in Denang eventually. Let's sweep there. And then we're going to sweep into Ken Fong. And we're going to um, raid in there too. So what, I think we'll just do the raid first, right? So we're going to move in an adjacent ranger. He's going to go active and remove these two. That's hot. Because now when we sweep in, we can bring in two. Three. I think three is good because it keeps three in the cities. I think that's good because obviously Ken Gang is like not great either. And we're going to need to eventually figure out that whole thing. Cool. We're going to do that. And then we're going to sweep. We're going to make this guy active. All right. So we did that. I can, can I raid anywhere else? Do I have a guy that can, oh, they're chilling. Oh, wait, can I raid in two spaces? Any one or two space? Yes. Yes. That is very big. Um, so I actually don't need to sweep here. I actually don't need to pay for that. That's super good. Okay. Yes, we'll bring this guy in here, and he's going to raid, and he's going to get rid of those two things. Oh, look at that, man. Because he can go into a city, right? In each space, yeah. Each space, move an adjacent ranger, and then desire to activate an underground ranger there, move two enemy pieces. That is so good, because that saved us a little bit of resources, because we're only going to pay the three resources to go into Ken Fong. So that is really good because we're not like super rich as the Arvin. Okay. Probably could have helped out here in Kwong Tree. I think Kwong Tree is going to become a mess soon. But this was huge because now we don't have to sweep in Contum and pay three. We can just <laughs> roll into that Ranger. Oh, that was good. That's good. That's good. All right. NVA. What do we got here? NVA can do limited op or an event. Again, I don't think the event is like so great for them. I mean, the U.S. is getting close, so this could knock out the U.S., and that could hurt them really a lot. And they would get, what, a limited op otherwise? Yeah, limited ops are pretty terrible. I mean, what would I do with a limited op if I was the NBA? I would probably want to rally, although I, I do have money, so I could start doing that. I don't want to march or terror, really. I probably would want to rally. Yeah, let's just do that. Because I want to get more bases on the board to make more money overall. That is hot, though, getting rid of support. That would be four, five points. That's actually maybe too good to pass up, honestly. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to take the event. I would love to actually rally and make the trail better. I would 100% love to do that. But let's remove support from Hue, Da Nang, and an adjacent province. Again, all the provinces are like that. But look, just go neutral. And now they're at 38. So this is going to be much harder for the U.S. to pull troops out and then have a winning condition. So that helps get the U.S. like on the back foot a little bit. We are definitely going to have to be worrying about the Arbon, though. But that's not something the NBA can easily deal with. They're going to have to really rely on their uh, VC brethren to deal with that. And that's going to be tough for... Okay, so they go there. U.S. now becomes available. We're going to discard that card. And we're going to draw a card. All right, LR, RP, Long Range Recon Patrol, Unshaded. The U.S. places three regulars outside of South and then free airstrikes. Mm, kind of cool. Again, we don't really need the airstrike right now, unfortunately. Ooh, three regulars outside the South. So that means you could just go into Cambodia or Laos and just start bombing, which actually could be great. And that's actually pretty great because, like, it doesn't matter about support or opposition here. Like, you do shift it, but it just literally doesn't count for anything. 
in Laos and Cambodia, like, you know, that's sort of unfortunately, that's how the game works, right? Shaded event, three regulars on the map to casualties shift each space they ran one level towards active opposition. That would not be so great because, well, actually, they're active opposition in almost every place they're at. So it's, like, not really that helpful, but it would get rid of them, and that would mean we'd have some more time getting them back out. Oh, man, LRPP. This is this could be good. So what is, where can I get them? Places three, and we do have three, so I could do this. This is actually kind of great. Honestly, we could come in here and start bombing and just reducing that and knocking the trail down again if we get the right amount of numbers. Oh, this could be the, taking the fight to the enemy there. Hmm, but the U.S. does go first, and honestly, the U.S. could do a lot of other good stuff too, right? Like, the U.S. could start knocking down the patronage again because they could start doing the train. They could do an advise, uh, start building up the aid again, and we could sweep for assault with Arvin in place. Is there anywhere I could want to do that? Yeah, we could do that here for Ken Fong to help them out. Oh, yeah, we can end that faction play. So they could help them out there in Ken Fong. I could have them... <sighs> I can't have to sweep in place. There's nowhere else I could actually have them help me out as much. It would basically be that and building more aid and doing a train op, which I think is probably what we're going to want to do. Because I'm a little afraid that the Arvin's just like building up a little too much. This is not super great. We gotta knock we gotta start knocking down their patronage a little bit. So I think we will do a train and an advise. I think that's exactly what we're gonna do. Although if I give them the event, geez, it's like that's not great. Three regulars on the map to casualties and shift each space of one level towards active opposition. That's already an active opposition. That's already an active opposition. And I guess they're, that's the only irregulars I have. Oh, I have this guy, and it's an active opposition. So I would lose three of those if they chose that event. But I think I'm okay with that because they're all in active opposition. So I will do an op and special. We're going to train in Saigon. And um, yeah, that's going to let us do that thing. So we'll do that, right? It costs us zero because we're not going to place anything. So we're going to train there. We're going to shift three patronage, two resources. And we're going to advise here in Ken Fong. So I think that's I think we can only do it in one or two spaces. Not selected for training, and there's just nowhere else that they can do anything to help us out with, unfortunately. Like I guess they could no, they can't even sweep here. We need to get some guys in position to do the one-two punch. So we'll go ahead and do that because they can remove this. So we'll have them assault for free here. So return to available. We're gonna train for free here, and we're gonna shift three patronage, two resources, one, two, three. And look at that, they're back up to 20. So that kind of helps them out and helps us out too. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay, and then honestly, they're going to take, they get a limited op or event. The limited op is not going to be super helpful for them, I think. Oof, the event is not super helpful either. Removing these irregulars is just not, not the most, like, advantageous thing. I think what they're going to want to do is, we could rally in Quang Nam. We could put some more guys there. I mean, we've got 10 gorillas. We really do need to be doing things. Well, let's go ahead and... I think they're going to make a move here in Quang Tree, so let's go ahead and put more guys in Quang Tree. So let's go ahead and rally here. It's going to cost us one. And we're going to put in three more gorillas there. All right. Yeah, we're going to try to keep Quang Tree like strong. Okay. Let's take this, show the next card, and I think that'll be the end of this video. All right, so LRPP, discard, draw card. Okay, so when I come back, we'll deal with the bombing pause. Uh, that's probably going to be pretty good for, I'm guessing, <laughs> the old NVA. We'll take a look, and when we come back, we'll end that faction play, get rid of that. Nice. And uh, see you next time.